Besides 3D printers, my other favorite tool that I'm also a little bit obsessed with is the laser cutter. And we just got one in my local makerspace. We bought a full spectrum Muse Hobby desktop laser. Now, first impressions, because I, I haven't used it enough to give you like a full review, but I gotta say, I love the design of this thing. I think full spectrum did a really nice job here. I just finished setting it up and wanted to throw together a quick project to sort of kick the tires a bit. Now, in my last video, I made these Cybertruck Christmas ornaments, so I thought a perfect project would be to make my own little gift boxes to put them in. I designed the gift box template in Fusion 360 and had them laser cut to make this. So the way this works is you use the laser cutter to cut out the pattern and you simply score where you want the sides here to bend and the folds to be able to make it a box. Uh, and then you just bend the folds in place and you glue it and you have your own little gift boxes. It was a fun and practical project to get me familiar with the workflow going from Fusion to Retina Engrave, which is full spectrum zone uh, print software that they use. Now, I still have to finesse that quite a bit and I'll be doing some more tutorials on that. Uh, but for now, let's go through the project and I'll show you my approach that I took to designing the box in order to have it laser cut. I'm cutting on some cardstock paper that you can get pretty much from anywhere. This video is sped up 5x by the way. The Muse laser cutter I'm using is a 40 watt machine and can cut up to a quarter inch wood. So I had to bring the power way down. My settings are 100% speed and 10% power for cutting, 5% for marking. You really do have to be very careful with paper or cardboard as going too slow or having too much power can start a fire. After cutting and marking, I simply folded the gift box into shape and applied some glue stick for adhesion. I inserted a piece of loft batting for presentation and of course the gift. I'm happy with the way this turned out. However, when I do this again, I'll go with a little heavier cardstock and personalize the gift box by engraving the name of the person getting the gift right on the box. All right, let me show you how I approach this design in Fusion 360. All right, let's quickly go through the design that I ended up sending to the laser cutter. Now, remember, because this is being laser cut, it only needs to be 2D. So I'm only gonna make a sketch and then send that sketch over. Now, one thing I do wanna try, which will be for next week, is actually trying the same approach, but 3D printing. So 3D print a, a flat piece and then having some living hinges to fold it into a box. So currently experimenting with that. So stay tuned, because I wanna show you guys my results. All right, for this particular design, we just need to make a sketch. So I'll go to create and now to create sketch. I'm gonna start with the XY plane and I'll begin with a center rectangle. I'm going to begin that right in the origin and this center rectangle is really going to represent the size of the box you want. So in this case I went with 110 by 110 and I am working with millimeters here. And now I'll do the sides and the sides are going to basically represent the height of the gift box. So I'm going to start with a two point rectangle for those and I'll just reference the edges here and I went with 35 by 110 so I'll enter those dimensions. Let me fix that 110 right here. Okay, now that I have this, I just need to repeat it on the four sides. The quickest way I can go about that is just doing a circular pattern. So I'm gonna go down to create and circular pattern. I'm gonna to click to select these three sides here. And if you take a look at my box here, my center point is going to be the center of my rectangle. And I'm gonna make four of these. And as you can see with the preview, um, they all, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see I've got four there, so I'll click OK, and I've got these four sides all measuring the same distance. All right, and for the final part, I just need to make a little flap up here. So I'm just going to grab my line tool. I'll just click L on my keyboard. Let me jump right in. Actually, let me move this dimension out of the way first. And I'll just quickly draw this basic shape right here. And now I can come in with my dimension tool. So D on my keyboard for dimension. I'm going to dimension this top from this bottom line. I'm going to make that 15 millimeters. And then I'm going to grab my dimension tool again by hitting D on my keyboard. And I'm going to give these angles a 70 degree here and do the same thing over here. 70 degrees. I'm just going to reference this one. 
and now I have that little flap. Now I can't create a circular pattern of this because it just won't line up. So what I'm going to do is use the mirror tool and I'll use the mirror tool to mirror this shape on this side and then I'll mirror both of these to the bottom part. So I'm going to need some mirror lines. So again, L on the keyboard and I'm going to draw one line going straight up and then one line going straight across and I'm going to make those construction lines by grabbing them and just hitting X and I'm going to go and grab my mirror tool. I'm going to take these three edges here. Let me bring this over here so you can see it. Uh, my select, actually it says four because I accidentally selected this. So I'm going to deselect that because I want this to actually, um, well, I'm going to use it later to mirror the bottom. But uh, always double check your selections here because that's one way you can quickly get errors. So I've got my three selected. Now I'm going to click here to select my mirror line and that's going to be this vertical line here. And that's going to throw this exact shape on this side. I'm going to click OK. Right click and I'm going to go up to repeat mirror. This time I'm going to select not only this side here, but also this side. So now I have six as my selection and my mirror line is going to be this horizontal line here now. And now these two get mirrored to the bottom. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. That's the basic shape that we need to make our gift box. I'm going to click on finish sketch. And what I need to do is export this sketch. Now, there's a few ways to go about that. I can expand the sketch here, right click and go to save as DXF and that'll save it as a DXF file. However, one thing I found out is that if you export it as is, it ends up sending all the construction lines that you don't need. So here's a little pro tip. If you go to create sketch, we'll create a new sketch here. Um, we'll just do it on the same origin here so that I'll select the XY plane. And I'll hit P on my keyboard for project and I'm only going to project over the lines that I want. So I'll just simply double click actually. It's a lot faster to select these shapes or these edges. I just want to make sure that every edge that I want is selected and then I can simply click OK here. Let me just make sure they're all here. Okay, and I'll click OK. And now if I untoggle that first sketch, I see, oops, I forgot one right there. See, so let's go back in there. And I'm going to select this line here. Click OK. All right, now I can see that I've got the outline that I want. So I'll click Finish Sketch. And I can go right click and then save this as a DXF and I can pick my location and save that file. However, I did encounter a problem where the laser software I'm using. So the Muse laser has this software called Retina Engrave and they don't take DXF. They'll take SVGs and PDFs and I believe a few other as far as vector files, but they just don't take DXF. So I found a workaround for this and if you go to tools, and you go to add-ins and then there's that Fusion 360 app store. If you launch the app store and type origin, O-R-I-G-I-N, hit search, you'll find that you'll have this uh, Shaper Utilities here. If you download it and install it and then you'll have to restart Fusion 360. But once you do that and you'll see you'll have a little icon here under your tools menu. And if you click on that icon, you'll get this dialog box. You'll want to check advanced here. So make sure that's checked. Then it's going to ask you input type. Go ahead and select entire sketch. You have a few other options here, but in my case, since I want to export a sketch, that's what I'm going to go with. And then I can simply select the sketch here and then click OK. And notice it saves it as a SVG. So a great tip there. I'm going to click cancel because I already saved mine. Uh, but if you want to be able to save as SVG, that's the way to go about it. All right, I can go into a lot more detail in this video. There's still a lot that I can cover um, in this subject of going from Fusion 360 to laser cutting. But I think that's a good place to stop. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll be going back and reading over them and we'll get back to you guys with any uh, questions you have. If you'd like to see me do more videos uh, in regards to Fusion 360 and laser cutting, uh, let me know in the comments. If so, there's plenty of more material I can put together. If you'd like to have the Fusion 360 file that I made, I'm going to leave a link down below in the comments to where you can get that. That way you can play around with the design and if you follow along and 
make your own, you can reference the actual Fusion 360 file that I made. So the link for that is below. Uh, you can go ahead and grab that. And for the next video, like I said, we're going to look at doing a similar approach, except instead of laser cutting, we're going to look at 3D printing a flat object with living hinges and seeing if it's possible to fold it into a box. So I'm um, still currently experimenting with it, so I don't really quite have the answer yet, but I will have a video showing you what I found. So, all right, hit that like button if you enjoyed this and subscribe for more videos. I will see you next time.